we're live already? Yes, we are live. We're good. That's we good are thing. here. And I'm hosted and Episode everything. 379 of the show radio. Daniela, what's up? Nothing. The sky. Everything's cool? Yep. We're good. I'm ready. Very cool. Prepared. Let's do it. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the show radio. My name is Andrew. Hi, guys. I'm Danny. And this is your source for the tech, gaming, and entertainment news. Head over to theshowradio.info. Once again, that's theshowradio.info. And check out our past shows while you're there. Subscribe and tell a friend about the show. The show is also on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash theshowradio. Uh, tonight, we have a special guest, which I'll let Daniela introduce. So we have a special guest that I've been, I guess, following and been friends with you online for a very long time. Sly, a.k.a. Sam. It's, it's very interesting for me to call you Slam, Sam because I've always called you Sly. And it dawned on me when I was getting your stuff ready. That's also your last name. Yes. If that's like the correct way to pronounce it, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, Sly is my last name, thus Sly, a.k.a. Gray Fox, and and everybody comes to this like crossroad of whether to call me sam or sly like either or is fine sam was a little bit more formal i feel like i'm in school when i hear sam so okay speaking of school i know I, you're gonna mm -hmm. think i'm totally creeper about this so i was trying to find an, a nice picture to attach to the twitter and man okay. i saw your myspace oh you're looking <laughs> super <laughs> You dug that deep? Are you serious? <laughs> because I was like, there's a picture. And it oh, was like, no. you look super sly. And I think it was like one of those MySpace oh, no. bathroom pics. And you're looking like oh, super God. smooth. And I'm like, what did this come from? And I click on it and it's wait, your wait, wait, MySpace. Wait, wait, wait. And I'm like, oh my goodness. There's so many pictures wait, in here. Wait, wait, and you wait, had like wait, this wait, white wait. suit too, this picture. <laughs> I remember that picture. That was, I want to say that was, what, oh, seven when I went to the CIAA tournament in Charlotte. And that's kind of a huge affair. Like, it's a basketball tournament. It's a college basketball tournament. But hardly anybody goes to the games. It's more of a, it's more of a huge party in Charlotte. And people, you know, wear their best. And I went and got this white white jacket from express i think and it looked good with the white aldos that i had on and i was matching and everything and yeah i i remember which picture you're talking about this is so embarrassing oh my god hey hey it is it is on there it is up there for everybody to see so i had <laughs> to that did not die <laughs> maybe you should set your myspace to like private now because those are like some <laughs> incriminating things like if we could have just like a roast of sly oh i would just have oh, no. so many slides of those that 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 oh. would just be it that would be my whole presentation i wouldn't have to say anything it's just it's just those pictures like they speak for themselves <laughs> which actually brought up a good point because i i decided to turn around and make my myspace page private so nobody can see those <laughs> Oh, you made yours private, but uh, okay, all right. Because I was like, oh, okay, we're gonna we're gonna be nice. We're not gonna choose one of these photos. But um, <laughs> that's okay. Go going back to it, though, I really really appreciate that uh, you said yes because um, TwitchCon was the very first time that for anybody who's listening, that's the first time that I ever got to meet Sly, and I believe I've been following you for what three, four years now. Since I, was... I started, actually. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's I, been that long. I don't even remember exactly how I came across you. I, I, I think it was like there's a couple of Hawaii based streamers that were, mm -hmm. you know, go check out my friend. He just started up his channel and it's just when PS4 came out and it was for Final mm -hmm. Fantasy 14. I'm like, sure. I popped in and it's like, oh, wow. 14 looks like a lot of fun, and I, I think I tried out the beta for um, for it then. And, like, you're the mm -hmm. one who pulled me in, except that I decided to play it on PC rather than going with the PS4 control scheme. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I started, of course, I when I started, I was streaming on PS4 because I didn't have a PC at the time. And, um, yeah, I was one of the unfortunate few who were playing on PS4 and who had to deal with the extra latency and everything. It 
it was good to get me into streaming into you know being live and you know doing all the things on with well with limited settings because i had to use the ps4 um camera and everything but it, it kind of that was what really got me into streaming um i remember the first ever stream i did was not of final fantasy it was of assassin's creed black flag and that was the week that was the very week that ps4 came out and i i'd always been watching twitch twitch streams and when i got the ps4 i'm like should i really do this i mean i've never really been on camera before i mean i'm just it's just me playing black flag should i really do this and then i clicked live and i didn't know what to do i didn't know what to say so i was just there probably boring as hell but they're playing assassin's creed and you know people actually came and like one person actually came and spoke to me and um that was i think i remember still to this day weapon 999 was his name on twitch shout out um and from there i just started playing more and more stuff on twitch until one day i come across 14. it wasn't the first time i came across 14. the first time was on ps3 that would have been interesting if i had you know streamed on ps3 oh god that would have been so terrible that would have but, been so um, painful i'm sorry i'm so oh glad you god. did it I'm, i am too um but yeah looking back on it I'm, I'm still glad that i started out on ps4 and everything and even though now i'm on pc sorry ps4 players if you feel like i've left you i'm still with you i still have my copy of stormblood and heaven's word and all the above on ps4 just as a backup so i'm, I'm still there sense so what what always attracted to me like to your stream even though i i can't i can't tune in as often as 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 much anymore but what i loved about your stream oh. originally is that you were always such a genuine person and you still are you still are and that still comes across very very strongly when i watch you now no matter from even back then i think i started following you when you ran, had around like 200 like two something Wow. Um, followers and you still pulled in good m numbers you're just super entertaining like if you if you decided no i didn't i don't i don't want to stream i'm like i i'm not going to be worth anything i'm just whatever what do you think you would have been mm -hmm. doing instead like what do you, where do you think you would be at right now uh, if i didn't stream um i'd probably still be doing the, the same thing i'm doing now but probably in the office um which is uh i am an estimator for a restoration company here in raleigh and um yeah basically at the time when i started well i was at a different restoration company at the time but at the time you know it was a it was your general kind of 7 30 to 5 ish type thing um the only difference from the one i have now is that you got the drink in the office so that's what made it fun <laughs> um yeah I had, a, I had a really really fun boss her, her name was Amy. She was like the sweetest person ever. She was, she would get on your ass if you really didn't do your work and everything, but sweetest person, fun boss, like the fridge, the company fridge was full of beer for, you know, after four o'clock when the guys came in, they were done with all the jobs for the day. Like, did you, did you turn in, did you turn in your time card? Did you do this? Did you do that? Here, have a beer. Uh, yeah, I would probably be in the office still doing the same thing I am. The only difference is now I get to kind of set my own schedule because I now we have trained technicians and they they can do um, on the sites at estimates and all I I'm in charge of is basically the final estimate with all this with all the um, sketches and everything and the price and everything in which I can do from the comfort of my own home in pajama pants. Um, so yeah, I would probably be in the office more if i wasn't streaming so you'd like, pretty much be everything. an adult like a full-fledged nine-to-five adult <laughs> yeah i would <laughs> but I, now i get to be in like pajama pants and i get to you know do teleconference meetings and like and and see here's the secret to teleconference meetings i i cheat the system you know because i have to actually look professional so i usually wear a button up but downstairs it's like you know board shorts or like sweatpants and everything so it's like half half professional half you know just woke up so kinda. it's it's the clothing of of the mullet where it's business up front 
party in the back. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take it one step back here. Um, okay. Who is Sly? Who is Sam? Who is Sam? That is such a loaded question. Um, well, Sam is, is a little little country boy from um, Durham, North Carolina, um, which isn't really country because it's city. But I used I lived with my mom for about ten or so years in like the mountains of North Carolina, so that's where I get kind of the country from. Um, I, in terms of gaming. I've been pretty much gaming all my life, um, starting from when I got my first Nintendo in 89 when I was five, and um, to where I am now, it's just become more of a thing. I've always, there has never been, ever since then, there has never been a month or a long period of time that's gone by without me having a gaming system. It's been, it's always been in my life, thus... I kept it going on Twitch. Um, in terms of away from gaming, if you probably come to my stream, you know that I am a huge fan, advocate, whatever you want to call it, of beer, especially craft beer. It's it's my baby. I, I love it. I have a, I can always keep a cooler right next to me at all times, even on streams. You, you'll see me reach to the, to the cooler full of Rampage and pull out a beer and everything. Um, as far as really what I do away from stream, I rarely get the chance, other than, you know, vacation slash work, aka TwitchCon, OniCon, and whatever conventions I go to, I rarely get the chance to do like go out and everything i mean the only other times i really go out are for groceries beer pizza euros the necessities um or to pick up equipment if i need to um general i'm sly is just laid back like if you if you ever if you somehow randomly came to sly's house i would invite you in give you a beer probably go get some more beer if I ran out. Um, we'd probably kick back, maybe do some gaming, maybe watch sports because that's something I'm into. If you know, I don't really, I don't really talk about it too often on stream, but I seeing as I am in the triangle area, I sports is in my DNA, football, hockey, basketball, et cetera, et cetera. Like Sly's just all around eccentric, I guess you could say. Sly is like your go-to best friend guy of like, you know what? I want to relax. Yeah. I don't want to deal with work. I don't want to deal with life. We're going to Sly's house. Here, here's a beer. <laughs> okay. Well, in, in your career, whether it be personally or even in streaming, what has been your highest point? Something that you're incredibly proud that you achieved? And what has been your lowest? Highest point. Highest point probably would be partnership. Once, when, and that was March twenty eighth of last year. Um, I, I think I actually remember what I was doing. I was uh, actually doing a um, match in the feast on fourteen, and like even a few steps before that, I had been pushing for a partnership for about uh, I'd say six months, maybe even longer than that. There's always, I always tell people, if you're going to do partnership, go ahead and, you know, apply for partnership now. Get the no out the way, because nine out of ten, you know it's going to be a no, unless you are really, really lucky and really, really, like, you have the stats and everything. So I did that. I got my no out of the way. I got at least five no's out the way before I got partnership. Um, the first two I knew were going to be no's, and then I kind of seriously pushed push for it, and was disappointed and everything. Um, honestly, I think that was my low before um, before Twitch, the very first TwitchCon. I was like, what the hell am I doing wrong? What is what is wrong with me? And why, why, why can't I achieve this? 
and I questioned everything about myself, every, what I was doing what was wrong with my channel, what was wrong with my content, everything. I, I really had a coming to Jesus moment. And um, I went to TwitchCon, the very first TwitchCon, and um, networked. It was my first time, you know, being at a convention like that. And I, you know, networked. I made business cards. I I uh, met a few people. Um, I somehow, some way, at the very first TwitchCon, got into the partner lounge at the party. So I networked more. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I got in. I don't remember, but I snuck in and it wasn't even really, really sneaking in. It was just me walking past the dude like I belonged there and somehow in some way I got in. So I networked some more and everything. And I actually, it wasn't even at the party. It was like just on a general day. I actually met the person who actually partnered me. Um, one of the people in charge of partnerships at Twitch. And um, yeah, afterwards, it kind of lit a fire under my butt. It kind of caused me to rethink things and, you know, you know, rethink how I do my content and everything. And um, the next application was a no, but it was a it was like the best no I could probably get. Um, because for a while now, for a while, when I did um, send in partnership applications, I would I would get the sort of canned response, quote unquote, the automatic response, so to speak. Uh, but this one was different because it was actually, it was actually, hey, I see what you're doing. It was actual words from a person. Uh, I felt good about that. It, they said, I see what you're doing. I see your content. I I like what you're doing. If you if you just get your numbers up a little bit more, I assure you, you're going to get partnership the next time, next time you apply. And that was like, I've got this. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait it out. You know, like he says, get my numbers up, get, um, get viewership up, everything. And I think I waited like a month and a half before I applied again. And that was the yes on March 28th. So I think, yeah, those pretty much were my highs and my lows at around the same time. Really? I think I remember that day too, because I, I believe you mentioned that you got it. You got your email. And we're all mm -hmm. waiting for you to get your sub button. And I think we're all fighting to be that first one that got first, it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had your you had your little dance party in your FC for your celebration. Mm -hmm. And then you yep. did the feast yeah. after, like half an hour later, after all dancing, shooting champagne inside the FC. <laughs> I think I remember I had somebody that, like I was like, I can't I can't get off stream. Can if I give you my card, can you go get me like this, this, and this, like a bottle of Southern Comfort and a bunch of beer? And they did. They oh, I remember this. you had like some delivery, yeah. and then like wait, wait, there's beer delivery. <laughs> no, no, because that's not it. There, well, now there is actual beer delivery, but back then this, this was just a friend. I was like, here, take my card, get this, this, and this. Uh, now, yes, there is beer, beer delivery. There is a company that does deliver. So yeah. Okay, now I'm like super jealous. Okay, we don't have that. We still, I still don't have that. Um, okay, so what has been the best advice that has ever been given to you about anything in your life? And mm -hmm. what advice would you... Well, actually, just answer that first person. What's the best advice that you've ever received for yourself that you, you carry throughout your entire day every day? The best advice would probably be the most simple advice I ever gotten. And it's so cliched, but, and I thought at the time it was so cliched and I still don't remember who gave me this advice. It was, honestly, I think I remember it was on a flight back from Maine when I was in high school and I was doing an internship. I was on a plane and I was talking to this random person who was sitting next to me. And I don't remember the entire story they told me because I was at the time I was tired. Like I just done a full work day yesterday and had to write a paper. But like the end of it, at the end of it, his basic advice was never settle for anything in life. No matter what it is, it may be the smallest thing. Never settle. And like that advice has held true to pretty much every aspect in my life 
um, from that day forward. Like the, it could be the most trivial thing, and and I won't settle. Hell, like hell, even again going back to beer, like I will, like if there's anything, like I'd never, I never buy domestics anymore. I don't do like Bud or anything like that, and and like I always do craft beer. So if I go to a store and they only have domestics and they don't have any craft, I will not buy any beer. Like same. Same thing for like work, same thing for for everything in life. I I just don't settle. Um again, cliched advice, but it's something I feel like has been a daily part of my life from them. See, my next question is gonna be what advice would you give unto someone else? But I actually think that's actually really sound advice. Cause funny enough, that's like the same motto that I have. <laughs> It's just you you never want to reach that point where you're like you're just okay with everything around you. Like right. you should always want to have more for yourself, more for the people around yeah. you. Always. Um so let, let's get back into your streaming things. What is um mm -hmm. what is the Dream Network and and how did you come across? <clears throat> Dream Network started after after the first Final Fantasy 14 fan fest in in Vegas three four years ago four years ago well no yeah it was four years ago um i had met mr happy like i had known him i had known about him watched his videos did all the things um we weren't on the same server or anything so it, like i hung out with him his girlfriend mel um pretty much all the people who were in the community who everybody and their mom knows and in a few months later after that he had kept in contact with me and he had contacted a few other individuals about um starting a stream team the dream network and we had started out with you know final fantasy 14 you know streamers and content creators and then it branched out. It eventually branched out into people who like general content creators. Like we added, um, we added domestic Dan. We added Avalon. We'd added um, Frosty, who does, um, um, Mog Talk. You know, he's still part. Of, he's mainly part of the Final Fantasy fourteen community. But we we felt like we wanted to add, you know, people outside of Final Fantasy fourteen, and um, you know, be inclusive to pretty much all walks of content creation and i think we've done that so it's it, it's something that kind of was started out of final fantasy 14 but is pretty much been you know open as of recent uh did is that where the state of the realm came from or was that before dream yes no no, no that was pretty much at the same time because as um we wanted say the realm to be a part of dream and um looking back when say the realm started the they had tried out i think two other people um and it was just like a just a little you know test kind of section I mean, we just talked about something i forgot what we talked about in the in the um in the test footage but um yeah they had tried out two other people and then they hit me back and they were like we want you and i'm like why <laughs> what the hell did i do i'm i was nervous as hell the, the very first from that to the very first show and very like the first few shows i was nervous because i'd never done something like that all i've done is stream and like play video games in front of a camera and drink beer and have a great time I've never done anything like, you know, a professional podcast format. And it, it scared the living daylights out of me because it's it was live and people were watching and you know there was chat and I'm like they're gonna think I'm fucking terrible. And I went and did the first few shows and yeah, like I understand that one, this goes on YouTube. So I quickly learned about the YouTube side of things in terms of YouTube comments and everything. 
uh still do to this day it just doesn't it's just not as i wasn't as nerve-wracked about it in the beginning as i am now like i'm it just really doesn't get to me anymore but yeah like sailor realm started at the you know conception of the dream network and i'm it's still going the game today excuse me does it does it ever make you nervous on being able to like if you're ever fact checked does it ever ever bother you if, like no you got this wrong about this patch and this update and where this is located does that ever make you nervous is that where some of that nervousness comes from at first yes but at the same time i realize there is not if there is good for you but there can't be a person who knows every single thing every single cooldown and timing of every cooldown and potency and everything and this 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 and this like no one's perfect no Wait, one I, I thought their absolutely. name was ethos Just... well ethos is good on lore eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that would be the perfect the, the perfect person for lore and everything i'm not sure if he knows like cooldowns and everything like we need like we we wanted well we did an episode where we kind of quizzed ethos and we were we were even terrible at quizzing ethos because he's like no what kind of question is that? It didn't. There was no story behind that question. It was just the da 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 da. And he made us he made us feel like crap for all the questions we asked him. But yeah, um, yeah, you know, like no one's perfect, and and we realize that no one is going to be perfect at anything. You may be really good at fourteen, but you don't know everything. You might know close to everything, but not everything. So I don't feel that bad at like being fact checked if we if we miss something we, we probably more than more than um a few times have missed a few things more than a few times is really an understatement but um yeah we're not we're not perfect all the time we don't know hell even the news that comes out like we the journalists are even misinformed because when i remember when Stormblood came out and it was the media tour and like there was a lot of quote unquote misinformation and it wasn't on the people who were reporting the information. It was kind of on all well, the people who pass the information on and well, this, this ability does this, 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 this. And then a few weeks later in the middle of state of the realm. No, that's wrong. This, this like we got it from the community team who was in, who was watching in chat. No, no, no. That, that's the exact opposite of that. Oh, so all the videos are wrong. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it, it was it was it was funny to see happen in the process. So so I was like, Mike, so what you're saying is we don't know shit. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. So yeah, I don't feel bad about being fact checked or anything like that. Yeah, but we we misremember or are misinformed or don't remember everything. It's not a bad thing. Andrew, do you have anything? I see you're being quiet over there. Yeah, I mean, just um, letting you do your thing. All right, so a couple of things. Um, this is a family-friendly show, so if we can keep it a little cleaner towards the end, PC. that'd be fantastic. PC, uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I just want to roll back on a couple of things. Uh, NES and 89. Uh, so what was the timetable between NES and 89 and uh, your, I think you said two years with your with your mom for a period of time? Ten years. Ten years, okay. Uh, yeah, what was going on with the 10 years with moms in, in gaming or in just in general in general oh um well you know my parents had separated well divorced eventually and i um i went to elementary school it was elementary middle and one year of high school so uh you know it, it was it was country it was a place in north carolina called newton north carolina and there wasn't much to do. There was it's it's not exactly, you know, farms and everything. It's not that country, but it's like a small town next to a a larger small town. And the only thing you really have there is football and basketball and that's pretty much it. That's what you do. You go to school, you play some kind of sport, you go home, you go to church, rinse rather repeat. And that was church? pretty much my life. Baptist. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and the funny thing is, like, 
when I was in, it was elementary and middle. Yeah. We, we lived right down the street from the church. It, it was honestly like a 30 second walk to get to church. So I was expected to go to church, Sunday school and actual service every Sunday. Like if I didn't, I, I was punished or my games were taken away, things like that. So, um, is, yeah, uh, like is it, church still part of your life today or not as much, not, I mean, I'm, I still, I still consider myself to be religious, but not, you know, you know, I don't have a church to call my own or anything right now, but I, I still, you know, I still worship, so to speak. I, you know, pray pretty much every night, every morning. Um, so religion is still in my life, but not as much as when I was young. Okay. So the NES in 89, uh, who bought that? How did you acquire that? And what was the road to acquire that? It was, I think, because at the time parents were together, um, both my mom and dad, because I had never we went to the mall before then. I always loved going to the arcade. I thought it was fun. Um, and they they saw that interest in video games and, you know, wanted me to have it at home. So when, like, that Christmas, I woke up and went to the tree. That's what every kid does. And saw a really big box and, you know, opened it and lost my mind. And I, I, I like, rushed my dad, like, Put it to the t hook it up to the TV. What are you doing? What are you doing? Um, <laughs> and I, I played on it as much as they would let me, which was pretty much all day that day because it kept me out of their hair. Um, and from there, from there, uh, maybe a few years later, I had gotten a Sega from my mom because I was living with my mom at the time, and I quickly became a Sega fanboy and. I still consider myself to be to this day a Sega fanboy because I still remember everything. And that's around when I first got into RPGs because the very, like, alongside Sonic, which came with the Sega, the very first game they got me because I had to have other games to, you know, buy my time with uh, was Shining Force. And that's really the game that got me into uh, RPGs. All right, very cool. Yeah. So. I like Sega. I love Sega. What, uh, Sega was what's awesome. A, what's the conversation like between uh, your parents now? Um, I can definitely share the, you know, my parents were divorced as well. What's what's the uh, conversation and and how is um, what's the holidays like um, in terms of making the decision who and where? Well, because I don't really get time to kind of time to go to my parents well my dad's probably closer i'd say closer but about a good hour and a half away closer um, uh, isn't it okay so distance I know you gave, okay yeah because i know you said durham north carolina and then you said rally what's it what's is that a big uh difference uh, in terms of uh miles rally and they're right next to each other actually um okay. it's yeah, they call it the raleigh durham area i don't know why they put raleigh first or whatnot but yeah they're pretty much right next to each other right next to each other separated by like a small town um morrisville not even that like you to actually get downtown from both cities is probably like a 20 minute drive so on the highway so not that not that bad um but my dad actually moved out of durham county into the next county which is like um person county where roxborough is so he's a little further out so he commutes, he commutes to work every day. Um, as far as the relationship goes between my parents and me, it's still, as I'm, you know, the common factor, it's still, it's still like one of mutual respect and everything. They understand that I'm the common bond. They, um, they still respect each other, still um, love each other, even though they, my dad did remarry back in 96. Yeah, 96. Um, 
my mom is currently with someone very close and I think about to remarry very soon. So, um, yeah, they still get along and it's, I wouldn't say it's a matter of, you know, who gets what time and whatnot. They, I, I'm honestly terrible with, you know, separating time for them because I, like now as I'm adulting, I, you know, have work, I have stream and everything. And there are, they're always the ones to call me, check up on me and see if, if everything's all right. And like, yes, when are you coming? When are you coming to so-and-so's for dinner? When are you coming home? Yada, yada, yada. I get that call more often than not. And I'm, I'm terrible about it, but. Um, from mom or dad? Both. <laughs> um, I eventually, um, I eventually did go, you know, to both. Like, because one year I feel like I have, I feel like I have time for maybe one big holiday. And so I went, you know, went to mom and then maybe go see dad at a, like, like an outing, family outing and whatnot. Um, yeah, I just now I really would like to, you know, spend more time with both of them, not, you know, just one or the other or vice, vice versa. Um, yeah, I just, that'd be something I really want to do is to, um, make time for them a little bit. Okay. Did you always, either? oh, go ahead. Did you always behave as good? I know that's a strange question. No, 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 no. Does. You know, oh, that's I'm, not, that's, not, that's not a strange it. question. That's I'm going to answer it and then we're going to roll with it, right? Um, mm -hmm. What I mean by that is, um, did was was mom or dad praying a lot or, you know, to make sure that you had your mind right? And was the road that you were traveling up to go to uh, Bible study Sunday school and, and, and hearing the preacher preach, was that dirt road or was that horse and buggy town or what was going on no, with that? It, it, wasn't, it wasn't that bad. It, it was like paved road i mean like we had in my small, small little neighborhood we had a barbershop at one end and church at the other end okay. um and we were close to to the barber like we he was a family friend um we were close to pretty much the entire congregation because we were there every sunday um in terms of behavior as a child i would say uh, i i wasn't perfect Okay, Don't that's fair. That. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Okay, so so pretty much right right now, what I'm doing is just filling in the gaps. Uh, estimator, uh, what is what is that, and and what do you do? And you know, for individuals who do not understand that world, an estimator is someone when you get when you get you know water damage in your house, an estimator is someone who estimates how much it will cost to, you know, dry out the damage and even further you know put everything back to um what it used to be so um you basically basically have your tools your um your laser measurer you're good and your company has money um and you are really good at sketching a floor plan and if you're not you might have tools from the county of where you stay at who already has the floor plans of pretty much every house in that county um and you you just basically you know take everything that is done or will be done and put a price tag to it because more than likely um you will have to deal with insurance and they ask for that and they will fight you on on that so um yeah you basically make sure the company gets paid um or the services rendered and what exactly is done like step by step. Okay. So do you, uh, when it comes to the estimation, um, did you have to do a, a licensing to be called officially an estimator? And then once you estimate these homes, are you limited to a certain county or state uh, where you practice? If, if it's a practice? Uh, when I started out, no. Um, I actually got the, um, the training probably three years ago, no, four years ago, excuse me. Yeah, I got these training four years ago. So 
it's not really a license it's just proof pretty much proof of that you can basically do the job you can do the job without the training um when i started out at my other company i did the job you know while getting training from my boss and not the official training where you had to take the exam and everything and you are our, um, your quote unquote license but um no, it's um basically you set your the company itself sets your um where they take the jobs like we we do jobs in you know Durham well Durham County Wake County we've done further jobs it just depends on the severity I guess you could say and you know is it really worth the the travel to and fro um from the office basically is it worth it to actually take a job i don't know maybe an hour and a half away because we've gotten some calls for like jobs in like Fayetteville and everything and Fayetteville's maybe an hour and 20 minute drive but it that was the only case i i, I don't think i was with the company at the time but they told me about it and they said that was the only case where we had taken a job that far away from the office and it was only because you know it was severity and you know it was the money pretty much was worth the, the travel and um equipment being used at the job so okay uh so amy uh still in your life i haven't heard from amy in in a couple of years she she actually her husband had uh gotten a job offer in texas and that's um and at the time the the company was you know starting to um to close out and um so i had to pretty much look for a new job and gotten another job at another um another restoration company in raleigh and um so before before the job before the office closed permanently, um, she and her husband moved to uh, Texas, and I heard from her maybe about two years ago. I haven't heard from her since. So it's still, I think I still have her number. I'm, thank you for reminding me to give her a call. No problem, anytime, man. So yeah. so you have yeah. um, fondest memories, top three as as a uh, boss. Um, for Amy. Top. Um, number three was when we had we had gone to this one one job and this lady was she was um she was rather angry to say the least. And um I was there when the interaction happened and um, Amy really kept her cool, even though as she was walking out, she looked like she wanted to kill her. So like we get back to the office and talk about it like, at, like in the afternoon and, and like, she tells me she really did want to kill her. Uh, number two was the get together we had at her place. Um, Kind of like how I envision myself if I want to have a gathering at my place. She was a wonderful hostess, has had had a a lovely home. Um, it's really good to just be able to hang out with her in that capacity, and which is wasn't really different from how she was at work. I mean, at work she's all business, but at the same time, I felt like this is an Amy I've seen before. And it, it wasn't too far off. And like just to see that dynamic and to pair those dynamic what dynamics was good. Um number one memory, I think, was the last my last day at the company where she we went out to the bar, which was like like a parking lot over, and we we had beers and she took me like she took me, she treated me to beers after um my last day and that was something i will definitely remember our conversation that day very cool so earlier you mentioned main internship right you, you did mention yeah. that 
Uh, what was mm -hmm. what was that about? Was that for current line of work, or was that something completely different? Something completely different. Uh, it was for um, it was for high school. In high school, I took a molecular biology class, and one of the perks of taking the class was you got a internship to uh, this 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 uh, lab in Maine called Mount Desert Island Biological Laboratory. And um, you got to intern under under a, um, a professor who usually has a lab or station there during the summer. Um, some from completely, completely um, prestigious universities like Yale and everywhere and things like that. I think I, I think I, one then senior summer was the professor from Yale the previous one was one from Georgia Southern so yeah it's it's a it's a it's a really good experience and it was just good just to be out of North Carolina yeah. okay I have I actually have one more thing but I'm actually gonna have to ask you this question by way of intermission did you expect this conversation to be that in-depth before you jumped on the call nope <laughs> I had no clues. Like once she got into once once she got into my space, I, I kind of saw where it was going. I was like, wow, you really dug deep. Oh, oh, okay. It's gonna be that conversation. No, nah, I I didn't I wasn't expecting it to to be that in depth, but it, it's good going down memory lane like this. Okay. All right, Daniela. Does it make you nervous that we know these things and we're asking these things? <laughs> no. No. Well, maybe the MySpace thing, yeah, a little bit, but yeah, other than other that. I highly suggest for you and for anybody, always Google yourself. I know it sounds really self-centered, and but it's always good to see what information about you is out there and it's available. I think you'd be, huh. be, you'd be amazed by how many different things your name is tied to. Um... Not just for you, just this is for anybody. Mm -hmm. um, go, going back to your parents, do, do your parents ever watch your streams? Do they ever just jump in? You see them like just lurking? I have to tell them about it. I, I like they know I stream, but they they're they're curious about it. But since, you know, they're part of, you know, that age group they they really don't understand it they really never thought because they really never thought that i could make you know a living and half a living quote unquote off of video games and and they still don't understand so they they've come maybe a couple of times to uh to my streams but that's pretty much been about it <laughs> I'm just like I'm trying to like think about this because I, I asked you that I'm like I wonder what my parents would think <laughs> I really don't know either they're actually pretty open they're pretty open minded about it they're they're um cause like I said it's like streaming is like inviting people to your home or you know inviting some hanging out with someone like having a beer or a pizza or whatnot. and that's basically what it is and in, in like when they saw it, they thought it was they thought it was pretty chill. So Okay. Um yeah, I, it wasn't have... it wasn't too bad. Oh good. Uh, one Sorry. last question for you, and then I know I don't mm -hmm. want to tie you up for too much longer, and then you can plug all of your wonderful <laughs> things here. So this will be my last question to you. Um okay. how how has being partnered and everything you know, as far as streaming and where it's grown grown and become how has that affected your life overall? How has it affected my life overall? Because um, like you like you said, you're you're basically inviting people into your life, into who you are and what you do. And sure we can only like hide so much and it's gonna be people who are fans of you and you're continuing to grow and and expand who you are your name your brand like so how has it mm -hmm. you know affected you good or bad honestly i don't think it's affected me in a in a bad kind of way um 
it's opened me to a new dynamic, so to speak. It's opened me to, um, it's allowed me to have the circle of friends I have, to have the relationships I have, um, to see a, a kind of new side of things. Had I not streamed, I probably wouldn't, you know, be going to Twitch cons, be going to anime conventions, be going to Final Fantasy fourteen fan fest. I probably would wouldn't wouldn't have gone to a convention at all. Yeah, think about it. But yeah, it's opened me. It's opened my world a little bit, and and I'm grateful to you know be able to do this. Um, not even just from the partner side. The partner side um, allows me to do a, a, a little bit more, and it it keeps me keeps me humble a little bit because um, people all often think partnership is the is the um, the end of the road. It's like okay, I can relax. relax. No, you can't. Uh, everything got so much busier after partnership, even to this day. Like, I hardly, between work and streaming, I hardly get to sleep. <laughs> People ask me, Sly, when do you sleep? I get naps. It's, it's okay, I get naps. Um, something I am working on, though, getting my sleep schedule together. Uh, thank God for sequel. Um... <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, like trying to get my sleep schedule back on like to on track with my new schedule was such a thing that I had to get Zequil just for it, you know, just to make sure that I didn't stay up and work like until like four or five in the morning and get and then get a nap and then answer wake up, answer emails, and then stream. Yeah, so I actually needed to make sure I got sleep. Um so yeah, being a partner definitely does humble you. It keeps you keeps you busy, which is definitely a good thing. Um, I always like being busy. I, I can't see myself not, you know. Well, Sundays are my relaxed days. That's the days I actually sleep in, get a little bit more rest, um, catch up on anime or old shows and things like that. That's the only day I allow myself to kind of reset the batteries on the net Monday through Saturdays are pretty much well Monday through Fridays are the work days, Monday through Saturdays are the stream days. And um you know having that level of um workload, I'm kind of grateful for it. Keeps you out of trouble. That's good. Because apparently you didn't learn your lessons as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> apparently i didn't um i mean honestly i don't like i have no like besides working i have no clue what i would be doing like if i wasn't streaming i mean probably read a lot more books and probably be it i'd still probably be doing gaming in some kind of way shape or form because like I said, it's been a part of my life, but um, outside of you know work, I don't know what I'd be doing. I'm I, at the time beforehand, I was probably just I was a pretty boring person. I went to the office, came home, played a little, played a few video games, you know, watched Sports Center, went to sleep. I was an old man. Still am kind of an old man. Well, if you're an old man, I'm an old lady. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you so much. Andrew, do you have any other questions for him? Yes, I got two. Uh, craft okay. Beer 101. Yes. I do not like bitter okay. beer. Um, I like sweet beer, if that's such sweet a thing, beer. if it exists. What would you recommend? Um, For you, I'd recommend Lambics. Uh, Lambics are good, sweet beers. Um, Kind of fruity beers but sweet nonetheless um the second one second style i would recommend if you like sweet it's not bitter it'll have sort of a chocolatey aftertaste so to speak 
Um, there's one great the vibe has called Claymore, which has kind of like a chocolatey aftertaste, but it's not a stout. It's a Scotch wee heavy, whether what they call a Scotch wee heavy. Um, pairs well with like hearty meaty dishes such as lamb and things like that. It's it's really good. Um, if you're looking, if you, it's not going to be bitter. There's going to be a little bit of this at the end, but um, if you want something kind of subtle, softer, I would definitely recommend cream ales. Cream ales are always good. Uh, Shiner has a good cream ale. Uh, there's some, uh, you just, you, there are a lot of good cream ales out there. I just swear by Shiner because I drink everything Shiner has to offer. Okay. Uh, football, uh, Patriots all the way, or what's happening? Did you just say Patriots? I'm asking. That was a question mark at the end of that. Am I assuming that you're a Patriots fan? I am not. Okay, good. Because uh, <laughs> they're, they're eight two. They're eight two as of today, right? Because they blew out Oakland, right? I think they played yeah. Oakland earlier today. Yep. I am a Dolphins fan. You're a Dolphins fan. Was that? That's where Cutler is. Yeah. Okay. Did you believe he deserved that contract that he got versus anybody else that's no. trying to get a job in the league? No. Okay, I don't want to go down. Okay, I, it's, it's not. It's not that. I, around, it's, but. it's not that I didn't believe that he deserved the contract. It's just that I don't think he was the right fit for us. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. All right, Daniela, it's all you. Okay. Well, that that's kind of it. That's all the questions I have. I totally appreciate you coming on, and I'm so yes. happy that I finally got to meet you, Sly. Which is really random. How I think we ran into each other at TwitchCon because we were sitting on swings, and I turned around, and there you were. Oh my god! <laughs> There's Sly! Sly! And we're in the swings and we're going on no, this no, no, ride. You were, on, you were on the swing. Yeah, yeah, you, you were on the swing ahead of me. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, because I, I had a couple of my friends and I turned around to look at them and I'm like, I completely lost and I ignored them and I just see Sly there. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much for, for coming on and joining us and letting us uh, pick thank your you brain. Thank you for having me. Um, so if there's anything that you want to plug, go right ahead. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you both for having me and probing into my life. I've never had this style of interview before, but it's interesting. And, and I'm not good at talking about myself. I, I, I get nervous when I have to. Uh, but uh, for everyone watching, listening, uh, you have a, gotten a glimpse into the life of Sly, a.k.a. Gray Fox. If you want, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Sly aka Gray Fox. You can find me on Twitter at Sly the Fox, Instagram at Sly aka Gray Fox 07, YouTube.com slash The Velvet Room, Facebook.com slash Sly aka Gray Fox. All the things. All the things. Thank you again, Sly. Thank you. Thank you both. Thanks so much, man. Take care. Take care. And then it's awkward. Trying to find the hang up button. <laughs> it's the red one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. What'd you think? Yay. Hmm? What'd you think? The many the many layers of Sly. Yeah, we we've been we've been friends online for like a long time, but I think that's the most in depth I've ever I've ever gotten with him. So it's been interesting. Very cool, very cool. It was interesting because um, I, I definitely wanted to uh, take a different turn, a uh, different approach tonight uh, for sure, because usually um, I start with the conversation, right? And I think depending on the context of the conversation, depending on who the person is, you know, we're going to take um, not necessarily turns, but we're going to decide who starts and who doesn't start. Um, but I, I like I like the fill in the gaps part. I enjoyed that. That was really dope. I was feeling that. Um for sure but no no cool guy cool dude for sure and uh i really had a good time with that yay <laughs> this is the last show of, i'm like trying not to get trying to it's, think about it try well, not don't, to don't think say about that it, don't say Daniela. it's like the last show you have to finish that sentence it's the last show for november because then it's if the you go like that's the last that show it makes it feel bad like this is the last show for november you know i was I don't know what, what was happening on Twitter recently where I had mentioned that and they're like, well, you need a break. And I was like, 
need a break. I was like, what did I do to deserve a break? Like this, this, the show must go on. The show must go on. No, but uh, definitely excited about the break uh, to some degree, to some degree, because Thanksgiving is, is running around the corner. That's Thursday. Uh, so this week is actually upon us uh, starting obviously Monday. Uh, once we usually post the show on Monday, hopefully that happens on time. Um, but outside of that, yeah, it's it's been it's been a good run since March. Crazy. It has been. It has been. We've had a, a lot of different guests, a lot of variety of guests, a lot of talking, a lot of topics, and then a lot. You know, you know what's great is that um, getting to know people. There, there's two things that I um, I love about this, especially from March, was that I got exposed to this whole new world of podcasting. And I get to use my voice for positivity. And, and on top of that, it's just getting to know people of different walks of life. Even though we have like this common bond, whether it be entertainment, whether it be gaming, everybody is like, you know, from Shrek, they're, they're an onion. There's a different layer to them. And you always get to find out different things and interesting stories, how they got to where they were, who builds up to be who they are. And I, I love that. I love hearing those stories. So... So like like Tracy and and Sly, they they both love gaming. They both stream two completely different ways of seeing the world. I think that's awesome. Word, yeah, it was definitely fun stuff. Um, so so this uh, this past weekend, I mean this week, I just felt like I've been doing a lot of driving back and forth to the city uh, for one reason or another. Uh, but uh, this weekend, I guess some of the stuff that we were we definitely want to mention. Uh, Anime NYC uh, did do that uh, for a day. So definitely shout out to the entire team there for letting me attend that. That was really dope. Uh, also did see Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. That was cool. Uh, you did a review for the Avermedia LG2 Plus. Uh, that's on uh, the site. Um, OpenVPN been having some interesting times with that. Uh, also Destiny upcoming DLC, which is Curse of Osiris. is some of the things that we have in the notes and more. Uh, but um, I, I guess I really want to reorder this uh, this list. Uh, I want to change the order a little bit because um, the Avermedia LG2 Plus, I guess touch on that uh, a little bit based on, um, you know, your findings before posting the review and stuff. Um, it's, it's It was very interesting and it, it was very cool to, to work with. Because I, I originally had the original, the first LGP, which is the Live Gamer Portable. And it's like the size of a, of a deck of cards. It's really nice, super sleek. So when they came out with this, oh man, I was super excited to try it out. A lot of ways it is, it functions pretty much the same exact way. It works as a pass-through. It's, it, I think it's a nice new standard that it's, you know, you don't necessarily need a PC so whether it be for personal use, say you're going to your friend's house, you guys are going to be playing some Mario Party or or Mario Kart 8 or anything like that, hook it up, you can record it, upload it, edit it the same way. And same thing, if even if you do it for work, you're going to events. Um, same form and function. However, like the, the one thing um, I guess is a positive is that... Uh, even though it's streaming, so it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't record 4K, it doesn't capture 4K. It still uh, records and streams at 1080p, 60 frames. It it looks so much cleaner than my original LGP, which is to be expected. But when you're when you're thinking about two devices that both do 1080p, you you would assume that they they're this they look the same. But no, when I was streaming with it and capturing, it looks cleaner. It looks crisper. I don't. I don't know if they like uh, the coding is the same. So I'm not sure what it is on that end. But I was very appreciative of it. Uh, and I, uh, my only downside to something I didn't like about it is that it does still use USB 2.0. I don't. I really don't know why they chose to to go that route. Um, if you're recording and and commentating at the same time it, it it's really off and it's off by a little bit but it's enough that if you're a perfectionist it's going to bother you and you're going to have to go through post-production to go and fix that or add in some in some kind of delay that was like my my biggest problem with it 
and that that still exists on the on the original L, LGP that I had. But considering I've had that for three four years now, you, you think that they they make that change, they make that upgrade. They do have another uh, capture device that does use USB three point oh. I don't have any personal um, experience with that one, but I do know uh, with other devices. Who are they? Oh, the same thing, Avermedia. They have okay, one that right. uses the the three point oh. It's their Live Gamer Extreme. Okay. Um, and and they that one is a couple years older than the LGB two um, plus. So I'm not sure why they didn't go with the three point oh. I really don't know why. I, I feel like they should have. It would have been the better option. Uh, it it's just it's just for that that slight delay. I know it's something really really small and. When it comes to me streaming, it do that doesn't affect me necessarily. It really doesn't because I have uh, my audio for commentating and and my webcam something separate outside of uh, outside of the capture device. But if I was to change that, then I do know that I'm gonna have to go and fix it um, post production if I want to up um, to upload it to YouTube or to Twitch. It's really small minor things. And that's kind of it. I mean, I could be a little bit petty. I don't like exactly the design of the physical design of, the of it, of the unit itself. You ever okay. had a Toblerone um, chocolate? The chocolates, no. they're like, they're triangular. And that's the shape of it. It's really super awkward to just casually carry around. Where's Where's that chocolate distributed? Is it... Uh um... Costco. <laughs> okay. <laughs> something, something. <laughs> no, because because some chocolate I may not be able to get. <laughs> so I was just trying to figure out if it's a local thing, if it's a Hawaii thing, if it's a, that's why I asked that. I I don't think it is. I mean, I know I've seen I seen it at Walmart and Target, so I think it's pretty easily to get. I got my big one from Costco. But it, it's roughly that shape, and it's really awkward and weird. And like I said, the original one was like shaped like a nice deck of cards. It could slip into my pocket. So if I if I was to take it for any events and I want to record at any of their demo booths, you know, I don't have to reach into my bag to grab this, to grab it out. I, I well, the original one, I could slip it in my pocket or my back pocket. Really simple. This one, it's like I kind of do have to store it in my bag if I have to. It couldn't be super quick about it, just because it's an awkward shape. And considering that your Xbox, your PlayStation, all nice and rectangular and square with these nice edges, and then you have this triangle piece. That's mm. like I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm glad you're small enough that I can just hide you behind something because you look really weird. But it, it it was really nice and it was it was really fun to play around with and and to, to have that in in my system and to be honest like streaming with it I've I've had a couple of comments where it does they say they it does look cleaner as far as console wise it does look cleaner it looks better it, nice. it it seems a little bit more vibrant and the thing is I didn't change any of my settings it's all default settings for both very so. cool very nice very thank cool. you again to Avery Media nice. for that and that written review. Is oh yes. Info with that written review. Yeah, my very very first product review that I actually got to write. That was that's also a great thing. So thank you Avery Media for giving me that chance to actually put my writing skills in cuz I right. haven't written a paper like that ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was going to say in a long time and I'm like trying to think I'm like well, yeah, I've never done a product review so <laughs> ever. No, that's, that's really dope. You did a fantastic job on that, uh, for sure. So yeah, that so that happened. Anime NYC, as I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, that happened at the Jacob Javits Center in New York, and that was really cool. I think one of the interesting experiences for me, I remember maybe four or five years ago, um, New York Comic Con. They they used to have like a little partnership with some anime things. Um, I don't know if they're still doing that because I haven't gone in such a long time. But to go to this uh, anime NYC and 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 enjoy the fact that all of these individuals love cosplay so much, right? To the to the point where, um, I mean, they're all decked out with their favorite characters. You know, obviously they know their names and origin and 
and I'm, I'm sure they're actively watching anime, some of them, maybe all of them to some degree, and, and just the culture around that. And even walking through, they had some, um, you know, arcade sections. I know there were some games, um, I guess some imports of like the, the dance dance type games, and there were some um, 2D fighting games there as well. Uh, just walking around and seeing that scene, you know, I did a, a couple of laps around that, uh, um, you know, setup, uh, you know, the way they had it uh, at the Jacob Javits. And, you know, for the most part, I, I really enjoyed it. I wanted to do at least one day uh, at the event, and um, it was really cool to, you know, take some of the pictures and, and you know, just talk to some of the individuals who are in that world, um, obviously more than I am. So I really enjoyed uh, that experience um, for for that for that bit, I enjoyed that experience. Uh, is it my scene? I don't think so, uh, because um, I don't watch anime as much as I used to, and it's been a long time, uh, even though there's a lot of shows that I enjoyed watching. Trying to figure out what I want to watch now is, is always an interesting uh, thing, uh, but outside of that, uh, overall, it was, it was a really dope event, um, and if they do it again next year and I'm able to go, I'm definitely going to give it a shot again. It was really cool. Yeah, so because that was like your first like non, like, I guess I want to say work event, but it kind of was work. Yeah, yeah, it, it was felt a little looser because, in terms of how do I go about um, covering it to some degree where there's content that I can share with other individuals, right? Uh, so pictures was the easiest way, uh, one of the easiest ways uh, to do that. Um, I did take a couple of video. Um, I don't know if I like the way the video came out in terms of, um, you know, some of the conversation I was having with some individuals there. Um, I have to figure out what, how to have a better setup with that, uh, with the mic and um, the cam since it's only uh, I'm one manning that, uh, which is always interesting. So uh, even considering uh, maybe a videographer in the future or something like that, someone that can actually um, take take that helm, you know, of the, of the video portion of, of some of the things that we do on the show when we go to the events, depending on uh, how that would look. I'm just thinking out loud at this point. But um, but I really enjoyed the fact that um, I was able to get there. Uh, it did rain heading over there, but um, that's part of the grind. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah, looking at the photos, it looked like a lot of fun. Very open area. Definitely yeah. a lot less crowded than you would see at, like, San Diego Comic-Con. Thank goodness. I don't think you would like that. I barely like it. It's fun. But... Yeah, I mean, if you're walking, like, bumper to bumper, then uh, I don't think I'd like that. I'm, like, looking at some of these, these cosplays. They're really yeah. good. Yeah, they they there were some, some that were, you know, they were not as well done as some of the other ones. Um, but I think that um, everyone has to start somewhere, right? You know? Yes. I guess that's how I look at it. So uh, you may think that uh, the show is good now, but at you know episode 20, you probably hated it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so you have to start somewhere, right? Everybody has to start somewhere. So, um, you know, I can't really, uh, don't judge anything before it's time. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are just starting out in the space. Uh, maybe that's their first, you know, Anime NYC. It's my first. Um, as far as, you know, coverage is concerned, I may not have done uh, a superb job to cover it the way I wanted to, uh, but I definitely wanted some memories there before I left. Yeah, everybody's got to start somewhere. But I mean, look, my, my episode 342, when I jumped on, was probably really, really, really bad. I know when I jumped on and was a guest on your show at, like, what is it, number 89? Oh man, I don't oh, ever want to hear ago, that. Right? I don't want to ever you don't hear myself. Do that again? No, I don't. <laughs> you don't want and the I was just a guest. No, no, that was so bad. Oh my god. I mean, it's part of the process. Like you know, we're we're we're, we're growing. You know, we're, we're trying to bring the equipment up. You know, to the best of our ability. We're we're trying to do more things with Patreon. We're trying to get people on our Patreon. So we're trying to figure that whole thing out. You know, Patreon.com forward slash the show radio. You know, <laughs> shameless, shameless. Shameless plug, right? Ain't uh, no so shame in my game. <laughs> no shame in my game. Uh, so, so there's a lot of things uh, that we're trying to do to to make things better, and and um, and even in the background, we're we're giving a lot of stuff away to make room for the stuff that's coming in. You know, stuff that we don't necessarily talk about, you know, publicly, but those things are happening as well. But um, 
a lot of fun stuff uh, happening in that space. So you have that. Uh, a couple of things I did watch, I guess. So uh, the main thing uh, that I did check out was uh, Batman Mask of the Phantasm, which was 1993. Uh, but I'm actually going back uh, to write more because at some point in my life, I had a teacher, Miss Vermalin, Vermalin, uh, that's how you say her name. Uh, she said I was a writer and I believed her. Right? There's always one teacher that says stuff and you actually believe them. So um, I'm actually going back into uh, the writing uh, portion of, of my brain uh, to look at some of these uh, anime stuff and talk about them. About 350 words or less. Um, very short reflections of, of things and um, you know additional content on the website. Uh, so it stays fresh and not just when we record on Sundays. That kind of a thing. Uh, so I've been doing that. So Batman Mask of the Phantasm, also Star Shrek Discovery. Uh, I've been checking that out, and that's been absolutely amazing. Um, and those are some of the things we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, so you have that OpenVPN. I've been having a lot of fun with that uh, for the first time ever. I actually was able to allow my router to handle the VPN. But once I have that active, the uh, Netflix doesn't work. So if I have the VPN active on the router level, it automatically disables the Netflix watching. So I have to disable it on the router level now that the settings are saved for anybody in the house to watch Netflix. So Netflix doesn't, they have, um, I think it's netflix.com forward slash proxy. I think that's the website where they say, well, we don't know if you're using your VPN for any, um, you know, crazy activities crazy is not the word that they use but uh since we don't know how you're using your vpn we're going to make sure that you can't use netflix while your um your vpn is active and and the reason that's so um i guess important for them is because if netflix is not available in the area that you are in but you can vpn in and pretend that you're in new york or miami or so, or a place like that whatever uh, then you can watch netflix and i guess they're trying to prevent that altogether so yeah, that kind of a thing. So you have that. Uh, Destiny 2, we'll talk about that a little bit later. That's the Curse of Osiris stuff. Uh, any comments on those things? Don't forget about Daniela. No. Nothing there. All right, so technology stuff, uh, how to start uh, with Ubuntu. I've been having a lot of fun with that. Recently installed OpenVPN uh, with a command that I thought I was putting in right. I think it's uh, sudo apt-get uh, network-manager-openvpn space gnome or dash gnome one of them so the so that that last section the gnome part is what i didn't have i was trying to install the open open vpn on the network uh controller where you see all the wi-fi names and all that stuff and for whatever reason because i didn't have the gnome name at the end of that command it wouldn't install but that's just you know random thoughts there uh, so how to start over, uh, with uh, ubuntu definitely have a lot of fun back in that scene so open vpn is on my machine i could VPN into the church stuff if I need to do stuff away from there because that's an hour away so I don't have to drive there every time if I need to do something so that's always fun. Uh, remembering Linux commands if that's your thing. Uh, Linux uh, runs on 100% of the world's top 500 super compu computers uh, according to top 500. The links for that would be in the show notes and 12 useful web tools if that's your thing. Any comments on those things? No, that's that's all your world. <laughs> that is. That's all my world. Uh, so so Tesla guy has this uh, unveiling of a new Roadster. Uh, that Roadster uh, claims to be the quickest car in the world. I think it does 1.9 uh, for... Zero, zero to, to 60. 60. Right? Zero to 60. And what was it? Zero to 100 was like 4.3? Something like that. Just over Something four like seconds. Four, right? I, like, I want to say it was 4.4. I don't remember what the article says. Uh, zero to 104.2 quarter mile acceleration is 8.8 .8 seconds so i thought i was interesting so i threw that in the show notes uh muse is an amazon add-on for the car if you're an amazon alexa person if that's your thing definitely check that out you also firefox quantum which is faster lighter uh, and now uh, the partnership that they used to have with uh, yahoo they got rid of that now google's back as the default search engine for that and uh, last but not least in technology is the top 10 free image hosting tools if you need to know those any comments on those things okay i just have one what what is the difference between labeling your car to be the quickest car and the difference between labeling it as being the fastest car mm, uh, interesting interesting 
Okay, so I have to think that. Uh, fastest to me is uh, fastest overall, right? In terms of top speed, right? So uh, if we were to compare my car versus, uh, let's say, okay, so I, I drive a, a 3 Series a BMW, right? So, but it's uh, the 330, it's not the M3, okay? So it's probably going to do uh, m faster at the top end than my car. Although similar body styles and all that, it's not an M3. It has some cool upgrades, cool upgrades, because we don't like talking about upgrades, but it's not. But quickest from one point to another, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's pretty much the conversation in that regard. So it may do stuff way faster than my car from, from the zero to 60 um, than my zero to 60, right? Because it's an M3. It's, it's, I'm the cousin to the top dog in that year. Um, so I think that's how I would do the differentiator for the two. So it's quick to get there, but okay. Yeah, so get the, the zero to 60 for the M3 is, is going to be quicker than my zero to 60. So if we're doing like distance in terms of, of the miles per hour, we can do that fastest. Uh, the M3 is if the top end is faster than mine, then I'll say the fastest. So I, I'm looking at it in that way. Okay. I was just I was just curious because that was like the one word that stuck out. Like, what's the difference between being the quickest and the fastest? Right. And, and, and see, a lot of things, too, with uh, when it comes to uh, marketing uh, to some degree, uh, there are certain words that it triggers because they're not the norm. Right. Mm -hmm. So if it was the standard um, conversation and, and the copy, then that word wouldn't stick out as much as, as it did. So to get your attention, they have to change it up a little bit, which it did. It did, because that's the yeah. word that I, I stuck on right there. It's like, right. Hmm. right. So I'm not necessarily concerned about that. Um, is it a production car? Is it a prototype? Because if it's a prototype, it's not a production car. If it's not a production car, what are we really talking about? If it's a concept car, what are we really talking about? That means not even, you know, we're drawing at this point. <laughs> if it's a concept car, if it's a clay car, right? So then you have those conversations too. Um, but uh, Tesla is pretty dope. I'm not, I'm not, you know, coming down on Tesla. It's pretty dope, but those those wording and those conversations from a production car to concept to those things are always interesting too, for the car stuff. Yeah, so that's what's going on with that. Uh, what else? Uh, so yeah, so Alexa for the car, uh, Quantum we we mentioned, and then the hosting tools we mentioned. All these things will be in the show notes. I definitely check the show notes out at theshowradio.info. We make sure that we have all the links that we talk about in the show notes for said episode. A couple of things in entertainment news. Uh, can we go on? Yeah. Uh, Kickstarter has launched a subscription service called Drip uh, for supporting content creators' uh, ongoing endeavors. Uh, it was an interesting thing to see. Tom Cruise is going to be uh, potentially one of the actors uh, working with Quentin Tarantino. Uh, in, in his next film, uh, MGM is reportedly teaming up with Annapurna for the domestic release of James Bond 25. Any comments on those things? Mm, I don't know, because I, the next Quentin Tarantino movie that's coming out is going to be it's going to be based off of Charles Manson. Who mm. is he thinking Tom Cruise is going is, is he to... If he's choosing Tom Cruise for Charles Manson, I don't know if I can see that. I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about that either. I mean, Tom Cruise is a little bit, you know, out there and off, but I'm trying... Again, I don't, I don't know what role he's looking at. I kind of just hope it's not Charles Manson because <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I see that. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I think that Tom Cruise is a little bit overrated of an actor to become be making movies anymore what like his his original stuff his older stuff great okay. but i mean he's an okay actor now what are you kidding me right now no i'm not kidding tom cruise yeah tom cruise it's just i don't know i'm not impressed by him anymore so you don't sound like you're a fan anymore at all. Like you're, you're done. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not a fan anymore because I just. Hmm. I'm okay, fine if so... he retires as an actor and he just goes somewhere else with his weird Scientology. 
Okay, see, and that <laughs> is the, that is that is the thing. Okay, so the thing that really gave Tom Cruise, if you want to say, a bad rap is those things associated with him, right? Linked with him, but in terms of his um, acting skill set, it's um, he's up there with your Christian Bales and your Denzel Washingtons and your Angela Bassett's and you can go down the list like Will Smith and you can keep going right he's up there right Uh, and I think that um, sometimes we have to be I'm not saying that you're guilty of this I'm just speaking in general that we have to find a way to isolate uh, the art and the skill set from the person very difficult to do extremely difficult to do for example, Chris Brown. You know who Chris Brown is, right? Mm-hmm. Right? And I think that because of all the things that has taken place in his life, guilty or not guilty, I don't know. I wasn't there. Whatever. But in terms, and I, and I think I re- recently posted this on, um, on Twitter. I don't recall any song that I've heard that Chris Brown was part of that I didn't like. Like, there's none. I don't remember any song ever, even to date. Everything that he has been a part of, featured on, I, I don't know if he produces anything because I don't look at credits for a lot of these things. I just listen to certain songs. And I'm like, yo, this is dope. This is not whatever. But when it comes to Chris Brown as an artist, he he is amazing. Now, people will agree or disagree with that. And I think we're going off tangent a little bit, which is which is kind of okay, but but I think that's that's what happens, right? When 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 certain um, performers, public figures have certain things attached to them, then it's hard for them, it's hard for the public um, who are consuming um, the, the uh, entertainment um, to, you know, separate the two. And and it's tough. It, it's really tough. It's like, how can I look at you in in a different light now based on what I know about you? That have been proven to be, you know, well, guilty or even not guilty, even allegations of certain things that I know about your life as a public figure. How do I look at your performance now? Because it's tainted to me to some degree. It depends on. I don't even know where I'm going there, but I think. Well, you, you okay, I get. I I understand what you're saying, but I don't even think it's because he's just, you know, think he's gonna go take off on the spaceship one day. I okay. I, I had to go find the the title of this movie that I watched that he was he was in, and he 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 is a great actor, but I have not been impressed with the movies I've watched from him lately. And like Jack Reacher. Yeah, I didn't like that movie. Okay. I didn't really like that one. Um, I'm going through and finding out all these different titles of movies I didn't like him in. Edge of Tomorrow didn't like that one either. What? <laughs> that was dope. Mm-mm. I didn't okay. like it. I, I I I really didn't care for it. Um, I think of the last in the last five years, Oblivion I think was okay. Um, I but I think that's because I like Morgan Freeman. Yeah, he's dope. But everything that was before that, I didn't really really care about. It just it wasn't that good, and I. He has like I love a lot of the movies he's been in. I just right. have not been impressed with him um, as of recently. I think the maybe. Um, Did you like I, the I, mummy? I, I, didn't, I didn't watch the mummy. Okay. But what I was wasn't. It? I wasn't really impressed when he was announced that he was going to be in it. I was like, oh, all right, cool. It's not going to be a reason why I watch it because you're in it. I don't know. Right. It's just. I think it's just to the point where he's just really overrated to me in a way. That okay. I just don't care for the movies he's coming out with recently, but I love his older stuff. Like I, I like yeah. um, Top The Gun. Last Samurai. I like Mission Impossible. I like Cocktail. I like Top Gun. But like again, like if they're rebooting Top Gun, don't really care for it just because he's gonna be in it. I'll watch it because it's Top Gun, but I won't be watching it because I'm nostalgic over Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. Like I'd be happy if they rebooted Tom, um, Top Gun and they didn't have him in there. <laughs> I'd be okay with that too. Who would you have as the lead actor? <sighs> tough, right? uh, that is a tough one. I can say who I don't want in there. Channing Tatum. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I 
Okay. Uh, but that's kind of it. I think he's the only actor. I'm like, don't, don't put him in there. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's definitely a tough spot to to be in. Uh, but yeah, he's Tom Cruise is a very interesting character. Uh, Christian Bale, I like. Uh, I mean, some some of these actors are still doing. And you know what? Even Denzel. Let's just talk about Denzel real quick. He has a movie coming out. Um, I don't remember exactly the title. It's called um, uh, something Esquire at the end or something like that. Denzel Washington is still a phenomenal actor too. I, I just for me when I see Tom Cruise I feel like okay you've reached the peak of your career and I see you trying I do not nah, okay not for me so so Denzel movie is uh, the upcoming film is uh, Roman J Israel Esquire right I don't know if that it's like a documentary of that person I don't know this person if it's a real person uh, so forgive me right uh, but the thing is with Denzel I don't know if I ever shared this with you is I believe that he's gotten to a place where he's himself on film i think that is like when you've transcended <laughs> I think one of the guys, you know so much so there was a movie that he did where i watched um i'm trying to see the name of the movie okay safe house uh, i remember uh, going to one of the events for safe house and i was listening to uh, the director uh, talk about you know the actors on on the film itself and there was a scene in safe house where i think he he got shot or something and he was kind of like bleeding out at like a pharmacy okay and then this pharmacy as he's telling or retelling the story to the person that's there the whole entire scene in that pharmacy in safe house was all ad lib by denzel it was not scripted see that takes skill that's what I'm saying. That is but pure see, there was, skill. There was a certain level of training that, that took place for, to get to a point where you can do that, right? A lot of practice, a lot of... But see, I, I think that he has gotten to a place, and, and there's, I'm sure there's some other actors you can name too, maybe Al Pacino or some of those other guys, and the guy who played in Ronin. I can't think of his name right now. Ronin. Ronin. I can't, I can't think of his name. Um, but um, um, I need to get this name because it's not driving me crazy. Um that they've gotten to a place where you know yeah, like that where you get to a place where you are yourself in every film and it's acceptable you're, you're just not the credits won't say <laughs> denzel washington has himself because it doesn't need to it's just like we just know that what we're going to get from you as a character um but that's not every actor at, at this stage but um there's a few of them. He just happens to be one of them. <laughs> just happens to be one of them, yeah. Man on Fire, American Gangster. Oh, that Train. was a really good movie too, Man on Fire. Yeah, absolutely. Good. So you have those things. Um, okay, GDC rolling out. Uh, of uh, They're actually bringing their own film festival. That's something that they're working on. Now, Google Home Speaker can now be used as an intercom. So if you want to uh, share something with the entire house and the, the speakers in another room, you can get that message out uh, to them. One of the things that I did see this past week that was really interesting is Facebook's new tools uh, for the creators. Uh, that's a website that's set up. I'm going to have a link for that in the show notes and comments on those things. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, that's not really much of a comment. <laughs> hey, so how's the weather out there, Daniela? <laughs> so bad. Okay. Um, I was still it's formulating a thought way. there. I was still formulating a thought. Um, uh, I don't know. I I don't. I still find the whole Alexa Google Home things really yeah. interesting. Then again, I would have to if I'm going to use it as an intercom. Um, I don't have a house or apartment big enough in which I would need an intercom to 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 like hit up somebody somewhere one, else. I'll just yell in my house. That's just one feature. That's not something. Okay, so I believe that one day you're gonna get one of those speakers. Gosh. It's just a matter. It's a matter of time. I'm not gonna say that. That's not true. It doesn't fit into me okay. right now. But I'm glad that mm -hmm. it has a, another function. Right. So that you have more ways to yell for your kids than just absolutely, yelling. absolutely. Like it's interesting how I find myself using more of those tools now, um, the speaker and stuff. You know, 
the weather and you know how long is it going to take me to this direction that direction or, or uh, which road should i take what's the traffic like before i get on the road all that stuff um on-time information that is at your fingertips or vocal cords depending on how you're using that Work. i think that the only other thing is the, the facebook creator thing i think that's something that'll be useful for us to go on and look at and if you're anybody listening if you don't know we do we do stream our show not only live to twitch but we're also live on facebook as well right. so did you know that <laughs> did you know <laughs> then you have the little rainbow that shoots across the more you know did you know that <laughs> facebook.com for us to show radio pod is where you can find that if you're a facebook uh, person definitely check us out there like us and follow us there as well it's always interesting stuff hulu is developing a hitman tv series uh, with john wick creator uh derek kolstad uh any comments on that that'd be good hitman's a really good series and and then to have the john wick creator john wick i love those movies i love that character they're really good so they're looking really forward good. to it they're really good i really enjoy that so that's uh, definitely look forward to that and also, The Punisher is out now. Uh, that was released on November 17th. And I have not watched a single episode. Same. Not yet. No no particular reason why. I just... I only have so many hours in my week here. So many hours. So your week is different than my week? No, but I just have different things going on during my week. And what's, having... going on, what's going on in Hawaii? Uh, what's, what's going on in Hawaii week versus U U.S.? I don't know. I have really weird work hours, and then I have you know my son. I'm turning into that sports mom, so I have a son who participates in in sports and has practices every day. So I have to go that? out. Um, wrestling this season. Last season it was air riflery. This season is wrestling. Next season, I don't remember what he chose for next season. You know the thing. Okay, so the thing with that whole thing with you, Daniela, you're you're like the quintessential super mom. You I don't are, know. You're doing it. You're doing it. I want to say and, thank you for that, but I don't know how I am. But you're doing it though. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go with this lie thing here, where I just think I don't don't sleep after a certain point. <laughs> Nah, you're 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 doing it, and, and that's that's super dope. Uh, absolutely. Sometimes uh, I wonder, like, when I reply back to your messages, sometimes I don't realize what time it is until it tells me. Like, it shows a little timestamp. I'm like, oh man, it's three a.m. No, I should <laughs> I should say, well, I know it's like fine for you because it's eight a.m. for you, and I realize I'm like, hmm, some messages no, I, I reply I, on time, sometimes I, I don't. Really don't have a time constraint really when you send those messages if you want to send a message at 5 a.m send it because <laughs> when i see it I'll, I'll still see it <laughs> and reply to you as soon as i see it so don't don't think that because it's um i might be sleeping which i'll probably not 3 a.m i'm probably playing river city ransom <laughs> see that's your 3 a.m your 3 a.m is like only 10 for me so it's still early it's crazy yeah no but uh yeah you can send messages at any time don't feel like there's a, a time you know, um, stop or something like that. Um, cause we're working through this time zone. We've accomplished a lot with the, the time. zone. when I tell people that we're six hours apart, they're like, how are you, how is it? I mean, you actually figure out like how to do the rec Yeah. Yeah, we do. We do. Magically. Only six hours. Only six it's hours. Only six, <laughs> it's only six hours. Well, yeah, it, it throws people off when I tell them that we're six hours apart. Uh, but that's that's an interesting thing. So actually, technically, um, right now we're only five hours apart. We don't observe daylight savings in Hawaii. Right, you did tell me that. You did tell me that. So we're only five hours right now. Right. That one Absolutely. hour helps somehow. Yeah, it does. It does. It definitely helps. Uh, but yeah, so so it's been it's been really good. So a couple of things in video game news: uh, Disney and Marvel are shutting down free to play action RPG Marvel Heroes. Um, that's one thing. A PlayStation experience. I definitely want to touch on that and hear your thoughts on that. Uh, and comments on those two things. I'm always excited for the PlayStation experience. Yes. PlayStation anything. Like whenever they have some presentation, I'm always I'm always excited. I mean, I guess I kind of am sometimes with Xbox, but it's definitely a lot less over the years. <laughs> Because there's, just, there's so many exclusives on PlayStation I'm that I'm excited about because there's 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 just so much stuff that, that is only going to be available 
on on PlayStation that's not available on PC. Xbox games, I know I can get it on PC. When it comes to PlayStation games, like Hidden Agenda, I can't get that on PC. And that I want to play that game. Um especially with their their VR games. Their VR games um I I can only get it on that platform. It is the most affordable VR that you can get right now. Uh, as far as the Xbox ones, I mean, you you can get a lot of those VR games on PC. They're available, again. So I'm not I'm not as excited because it's they they don't have exclusives just to that console that I can be excited about. Because I know, like I'm gonna be excited and happy and and, and see those announcements, but I know I can get it on PC. So. I, I, I just it's it's just not the same type of excitement. Okay, so no. is it safe to say that you are a PlayStation fan girl? If you're only choosing those two platforms, then yes. Okay. But Fair then enough. if you include the PC, then I'm just gonna be like PC Master Race. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> okay, all right, just, fair enough. Just like that. Fair enough. That's pretty funny. I like how you did that. That's funny. Um, okay, so Fortnite, uh, new update, 1.9 update is live. Uh, new placeable launch pads, if that's your thing, enabling you to spring into the air if you're excited about that. Uh, redeploy your glider and drift about whenever, wherever you please. If you're extremely hyped about that, then there you go. There you go. That's news for you. Warface gets a battle royale mode. And I know, Daniela, there's one thing I know. I mean, I know much when it comes to this podcasting stuff. I I don't claim to know anything, but I know you're excited for another game that includes Battle Royale mode. Right, Daniela? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I feel like everybody's going that Battle Royale mode. Like, that is the new hype thing to go and do, and everybody's jumping on that, that train to go and make it available. Uh, going with with Fortnite, uh, I will still prefer PUBG over any other VR game that's available. But I, I did play a couple of matches of, of Fortnite last night, and it was fun. I got my first duo win, but it wasn't it wasn't PUBG. I will, I will still prefer it. Now Warface, I didn't I didn't know I didn't know what Warface was, and apparently this game came out three years ago. Yeah. And I was looking at the trailers. It is a free to play game. Uh, mm-hmm. Free to play games, obviously. So, anyways, there are microtransactions that happen into it. But it looked it looked fun. It looked good. The Halloween event that they had looked like a lot of fun. But I feel like it's also some people or some games attempt to, you know, bring life back into their game. And it seemed to fit in with the agenda of what the game, the base game, original game of Warface is about. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that I would want to try it or play it. Um, if I can get, if I can get what I want out of a single game, there is almost no reason for me to go and find it elsewhere. Like if I'm happy with a shooter, I'm not going to go and try out every shooter. I'm going to stick with the one that I enjoy the most. Right. And I just, I don't know. I, I, it's just the battle royale thing is also just kind of like, okay, where do we stop? It's, <laughs> there's a, there's a lot, and I know there's going to be more coming out because people like that whole last man standing feel. It's a different type of adrenaline rush compared to, you know, your typical PvP, um, four v four, five v five shooters that's out there right now. I just, I don't know. It's it's gonna be like pretty soon a very oversaturated genre. If you have Kinda to pick like... a game that is going to do that again, um, next another battle royale infused title. What game would you would you pick? New or old? It could be old. Hmm. Oh boy. I don't know. Okay. I, I really don't know. Like I, I I honestly wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Call of Duty or Battlefield came out with one, to be honest. Yeah. Now if no. Battlefield did it, ooh. <laughs> You'd be all about that, wouldn't you? 
I would just try it for a couple of times, even though I know it's not my thing. But if Battlefield did it, especially Battlefield One, oh man, it's, that's that's another thing right there. Um, I've always appreciated what EA, I believe it is EA, right, has done with uh, the Battlefield uh, thing, and now they just got the Titanfall people. It's it's gonna be crazy to see what what's gonna happen in the next couple of um, six to nine, uh, more more twelve to fifteen months. What announcements and especially the next Halo has it really been announced at all? So we're looking forward to seeing all of these companies and the battle royale thing. What would that look like in a Halo world? A lot of jumping. A lot. A lot of jumping and quick scoping. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> A lot of jumping uh, so it's it's crazy uh, activision has announced a delay for the launch of call of duty wwii microtransaction systems uh, which has been pushed until next week next week i believe that's the 21st around that time uh, give or take any comments on that i'm so tired of microtransactions too i mean i know that's everybody has the option to go and buy just like oh, it's yeah, it's a standard it's pretty much right. a standard so I guess it's great that... You know what? No. I'm surprised they didn't have the microtransactions from day one, to be honest. Okay. Right. Optional. So. Right. A lot of money make, uh, making there. Opportunities. But it's optional. You do not have to. But you know there's a lot of people that do. I wouldn't right. be so upset about microtransactions if I didn't have to pay the full $60 for a brand new game. If they had World War II available for $30 with microtransactions in it, okay, right. fine, because I only pay $30. But to pay, like, you're already getting so much money from some people. Like, you're getting the $60 up front right there. And then you're going to add these microtransactions, which, yes, it is optional, but you know, you know people are going to buy them. Right. That's why it's not going away. Ever. Ever. Right. So why why do we still see individuals complaining about it if it's not going away? Because I just see it as being money hungry. I mean, I don't I don't buy any games that I don't I don't give in to microtransactions for something that I paid for already. Because I feel like okay. you already have my money. That's all you're going to get. You're not going to get any more. However, I have a different feeling for games that are really relatively cheap. Um. Oh man, I can't even remember the the title of the game, but it was a PS it was a PS4 title, and I think the original game was like fifteen or twenty dollars, and it ha and it was a really really good title. I can't remember the name of it, mm. but um, they had extra DLC, and it was like it was just skins, if anything, and it was like a f a few handfuls. But I enjoyed the game so much, and I love the work that they put into it that I'm like, you know what? For fifteen twenty dollar game, here's you know an extra five dollars. I'll go and buy these skins to to further support you know what you guys did because I enjoyed it. Sixty dollar game, I'm not gonna do that. No. That's where I draw the line. It's like you already have my sixty dollars. We're good. Goodbye. Okay. Right, so so before I forget, if I wanted to mention this thing, so Batman Mask of the Phantasm, I did mention earlier, it was 1993. Uh, it is the cousin of Batman the Animated Series, which is now streaming on Amazon Prime members. This DC Comics masterpiece takes you on a roller coaster ride with the Dark Knight, played by Kevin Conroy, uh, trying to figure who is terrorizing the city. Uh, this elusive thorn is roaming through the city, uh, bringing vengeance to anyone on the hit list. An intentional and loose description of the film. I know. that's That was my opening paragraph for the post that I did for Batman Mask of the Phantasm. What would you think about that writing stuff? That style? What would you what you thought? It was good and personable. Was it right? Mm -hmm. It was okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm trying to do a little bit more of that. So overall, I did enjoy the film. It was very emotional side of Batman that I didn't see before or recall seeing before in relationship with you know, a female that he really wanted to be with and the struggle between being the Dark Knight and being Bruce Wayne and trying to figure all that stuff out, which was really interesting to me uh, watching that. I uh, definitely wanted to mention that before I forgot that is available on showradio.info, a piece that I wrote about that uh, film. So this is going on there. Uh, THQ Nordic has acquired Biomutant Developer Experiment 101 as well as the 
Biomutant IP. I do not know what that is right now, but I'm going to have a link for that in the show notes. Uh, there's a lot of acquisition stuff happening. We did we saw the EA thing recently. We're seeing we're seeing this. We're seeing a lot of sales numbers, which we usually post. Uh, we, we're seeing underwhelming sales from UK uh, for the Xbox stuff, which was you know not a lot of people really talking about. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, conversations with uh, the the next thing we have in the show notes is the Xbox game gifting uh any comments on those two things acquisitions and game gifting game gifting should be a standard for all platforms word it is it's, it's nice i i love it um steam steam when it comes to holiday sales or i know somebody that's on my friend list that's you know they have a birthday coming up or something and there's a good sale going on i'll you know i'll go and randomly sift through their wish list and then it's a good price gifted to them it's a good feeling it's nice it is so thanks xbox for finally making that available <laughs> you know word yeah they they sure did they did their thing with that uh, the voodoo app now supports 4k hdr 10 streaming on xbox one x and xbox one s uh, iron iron banner iron banner destiny uh, 2's monthly multiplayer event returns next week on all platforms uh and i believe that includes PC that's for the first time uh, so that's in there twitch summary and achievements um, definitely want to hear your thoughts on that in regards to streaming and um, what people see now what they get to benefit from as they build their channels which we're building this channel here on the show radio.info um, you can find information about the channel there but if you're on twitch twitch.tv forward slash the show radio live um it's a good feeling. It, it's, it strangely is a very satisfying feeling. Like when they had first announced it, I'm like, oh, that's cool. I get to see the achievements. But it is a very interesting feeling to see that little notification pop up of like, hey, you did this. And I don't know if that's just from years of grooming from Xbox and PlayStation when you like hear or see that little pop-up of like yay you got this trophy yes you got this gamer points um it it's also a really great way to be able to track where you're at as far as on your road to being an affiliate it'll tell you hey you know he, these are the requirements you need to meet to be able to get to this um affiliate i think is it's you don't have to apply for affiliates you, you automatically, like, when you meet those, that criteria, um, I feel, I think that Twitch actually has a way to say, like, hey, you got this, they'll review your stuff, and then they, they, they'll they tell you whether you're affiliate or not on their own. It's, like, kind of, kind of in a way autom automated. What I've noticed since then, especially more on the Twitter side of things and, and, and in some chats, like, people will see the twitch partner thing and it says one of three for mine on my personal channel it says one of three and that all that does is tell me that i'm like okay well this is the first set of requirements i need to meet and then there's a second set of requirements and a third set but i the the misconception that i feel a lot of people have is that once they meet all of this criteria instantly you're partnered kind of like affiliates is not and, and it's come from twitch you know staff and that you still have to apply like you normally would for any partnership and they can still deny you even if you meet all this criteria so i think people got their their hopes up on you know making this happen for them if they meet all these requirements and they are still difficult requirements to reach i can get the hours and the days within a 30-day period but like you have to have so many concurrent viewers and you still have to you still have to grind out you still got to work for it but it's nice to just to have that that progress to see where you're at and how you, you know how hard you're working actually has like this visual graph for you that's to know like yeah we see your work you're getting there good job um but on top of that the twitch summary thing i think I, I love the most. I, I like numbers. I like seeing graphs. I like seeing stats. I like seeing and seeing that growth or that drop. And I think it's it's a great way uh, for anybody who's very serious about streaming 
to be able to see like, okay, well, on this day I was playing this game or talking about this thing and, and, and this is, you know, the audience that I had versus, you know, playing this one, you know, it wasn't as popular, it wasn't as, as big and drawing as much. And then on top of that, to be able to see, you know, the different times as where you hit your peak, where you're at your low, where did these people come from, where they, these, these, uh, hosts, it, it, it's really nice. It just provides a lot of good visual and a lot of good information and you can never have too much information. And hello, Squash, who's currently sitting in Twitch chat right now. Thank you for joining us. So uh, I, I'm I'm very happy with that. It was a long time coming. I kind of wish that they there was a way for them to retroactively um, date things because like any um, like any other achievement system that's out there, it'll give you a date of like, hey, you reach this point on this this day. I know a lot of the stuff that I achieve or says I achieved, I've done years before. Uh, <laughs> there's there's some of them I kind of wish I could see how many viewer hours I actually really have. I don't think there's a way for them to be able to do it. Because there's somewhere in there where you can, like, you achieved, like, 100,000 viewer hours or something like that. It's something insane. I'm like, wow. It's a lot of hours and a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so here's the thing, right? Um, Destiny 2 curse of osiris right so that's going to be december 5th uh, we did write a piece on that on the show radio.info you can find that at the show radio.info so uh, opening paragraph uh, destiny curse of osiris is the upcoming expansion pack for the from from the developers who brought you halo uh, which uh, celebrated recently 16 years on november 15th as i was watching bungie stream the first of three i was trying to gauge how excited i was about the upcoming expansion and the verdict. I need to see more. That's Always the first paragraph. More. Yeah, that's the first paragraph. Uh, and and the thing is, uh, I was uh, talking to a buddy of mine in regards to uh, Destiny and the grind and Destiny 2. And, and I believe that I put down Destiny 2 faster than I did Destiny 1. I don't know if it was because of the way uh, Destiny 1 was framed, uh, the way the grind was framed. Um, I think to some degree, I miss the grind. Uh, I miss the mystery of some of the things that you did uh, in Destiny, which is why I think it's very interesting that the uh, Lost Sectors are going to be discovered on your own, um, you know, to some degree for this upcoming expansion, uh, Curse of Osiris and all those things. So I kind of miss the grind, and, and I'm not that... Um, I'm not running to Destiny 2 like I was running to Destiny 1 to some degree. I think in the beginning, I, I think that um, watching, um, I, I shouldn't say watching, just just thinking about what to play right now. Um, and it's it's a tug of war between, you know, uh, first person shooters, obviously, but but there's there's no mystery for me right now when it comes to um, Destiny. And, and, I, and it sounds strange to me even saying it. Um, because I, I know to some degree where most of the things are that I can just go to and, and grind certain things. The loot cave thing was interesting, which uh, the loot cave for the coins and um, where's that? EDZ South, I think that's the Weep um, Lost Sector. Uh, that, they didn't close that. They didn't seal that or hot fix that thing. Uh, still? So it's just, yeah, you know, like I could still go into that Lost Sector and then pretend, let's say, the coins were still coming out of the chest or whatever. I would open the chest, run down the hallway, and then turn around and then go back into the chest and open it. And I did that very recently, thinking that they were going to patch that. Um, and it still wasn't patched. And this was after the uh, new monarchy. They won the this uh, faction war that just took place, the faction thing. So I don't know. It's just weird for me. Weird place. You know, Destiny in terms of, you know, the PvP is still great. Um, the grinding for the strikes makes no sense to me at this point because uh, the gun that I really want, I got, you know, pulse rifles and stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to do a time nightfall. To me, I, I'm not excited about that. I'm excited about the game overall, but there's just certain, there's just little things about it that is turning me off. So I'm trying to see 
what what's gonna happen and it's it's i can't believe i'm like sharing <laughs> i like this is this is this is what it is right now you know i love the game but there's certain things uh, not really doing it for me time nightfalls not doing it for me not doing it for me um yeah i wasn't really big on the shader thing i think um the shader conversation a lot of people jumped on that oh what do you mean i can't have shaders how do i acquire more i wasn't really big onto that shader war whatever that conversation was i think it was a little silly at, at a lot of it was silly um but um as you can see now you probably have so many shaders you don't even know what to do with it that's a whole nother thing but uh, the mystery um I, i'm not gonna s mystique maybe the wrong word but there's just something about it that feels hollow What what do you think it is different? Because I felt uh, I'm not um, I'm kind of agreeing with you in some sense on the Destiny Two thing. I'm just not the typical person to want to grind out for things. I'm not. That's mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing for me is I don't I don't want to feel like for me to to enjoy the game I have to grind out to get this gear to get this. Um, but I don't think it's so much grinding as it did for Destiny One. So what do you think the difference is for you now like it's, that it's giving you that hollow feeling compared to D1 and D2? Um, I think the experience of since we played it for so long, there's different expectations, right? So for the individuals coming into the game for the first time, one of the major changes uh, that they did was the quality of life of the game. So they made, they tied a lot of loose ends together to make it easier for you to know what to expect when you do certain things and i think that is one of the greatest things that they've done uh, for the game and for me that's one of the things that i wish they didn't do so much of because it's now i'm missing the elements of hey let's gather people together and let's figure this thing out there's really no reason for me to go on reddit now right to read stuff you know and then the the tier 12s for your gear and i think that was always a conversation now what proper gear to set up to make sure you have the best gear when you go into uh the uh, the pvp so so things that allowed me to really um go through the process of i, I guess at the end of it i really enjoy research more than i'd like to believe i, I really really enjoy it right and I think that um, even with the conversation that we were having earlier with Sly, one of the core themes of the conversation, you know, after the questions you asked, tying up the loose ends for me really dealt with research. All the questions I was asking, let's dig here, let's dig, what happened here, what happened there? And I realized that I enjoy that process more than I'd like to, to admit. So, and I think that's missing. Right, I think that's missing to some degree uh, for me and Destiny. That doesn't mean I'm not going to play the game. I love the game. I'm looking forward to what they're going to do with the next uh, DLC. Obviously, that's uh, December 5th, which is literally like right around the corner. You blink, it's going to be here. Um, that's going to show up. But I'm not. I need to see more. Right. So okay. that, that's that's where I'm at. as as a big Destiny fan, I've I played it uh, ever since they did the july beta that one time and they got some good numbers out of that and i've been playing it since uh, so i've seen ups and downs i've seen a couple of things with the game um you know kind of grew with the game to some degree in terms of how i look at fps love the rpg fps element of destiny i'll always enjoy that but um i guess as i really think about it and the writing is helping me really think out loud and seeing it what i really feel about the game and i think that experience with the things that we're doing now with, with the writing on the show is, is going to help out um, framing things a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, that's what's going on with that. Um, as uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 launches the ability to purchase crystals, the sequel's in-game currency uh, for in-game microtransactions, <laughs> it's currently unavailable for players, and EA has confirmed that it has pulled microtransactions from the game temporarily. Uh, so that's what's going on with that. Um, I did not fully look at that whole thing, right, uh, in regards to the conversation. I know we have a link in show notes for that in, in terms of some of the things that they talked about, what they were doing, not doing. Uh, Daniela, 
Uh, talk to me. Yeah, uh, real quick. Hey there, fresh in chat. Um, I kind of like dived a little bit into the conversations that people were having, and it doesn't seem like anybody's happy with Battlefront Two at all. It isn't okay. like I I believe like a lot of the the stuff that you can unlock that's on the disc like people having to pay to unlock it it's not agree they don't agree with it and then I have to agree with them too um because I I can't remember the price of it but it was some in insane amount that somebody came up with about how much it would it would cost to unlock um everything it was right. some insane price and they did like I mean the microtransactions also give you that option to earn, I guess, in-game currencies and, and stuff like that uh, based off of how many X amount of hours that you play on the game. And the number to that was like several thousand hours. Right, right, right. That's crazy. So it's either you, you put in several thousand hours or you pay several hundreds of dollars. Nah, that's not for me. And not nobody nobody's happy about that. I wouldn't be. Uh, and that, that's always been um, an issue. Like, even when it came to Gears, there was stuff that you could unlock that was on the disc that you have to pay for. Mm. No. No. It's not. It, it's not. And it, it's very, it's a very, very touchy subject. Some people don't mind it. Some people do. But uh, if, if you're a gamer on a budget and you want these things, but you can't afford to go and buy it, oh, yeah, just, you know, go put in couple thousand hours and by that time you know the game will probably be obsolete and battlefront 3 will probably be out by that time i don't know you have to really super love the game but i i i definitely see other people my friends I, i'm not interested in the game myself personally but the ones that have have played it they're just they're not having it they're they're not they're not happy with it um the campaign i believe somebody told me it was like only four hours long right Are you kidding me four hours my goodness so so the interesting part about the whole thing right if social media didn't exist and they made the game the way they made it there would there would be no way for you to amplify the message of how um you know upset or disappointed you are in the game right so social media has opened up a whole other thing obviously to speak to how you feel about certain things and the, the verified checks of these accounts who start talking about them, the Reddits and, and all the other uh, sub forum people that talk about these things have amplified the message to a degree where one of the paragraphs that they had on, on the thing uh, said, uh, so we're reducing the amount of credits needed to unlock at the top here is by 75%. Uh, Luke, Skywalker, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader will now be available for 15,000 credits. Emperor uh, Palpatine, Chewbacca, mm -hmm. And Leia Organa for 10,000 credits and Aiden for 5,000 credits. Based on what we've seen in the trial, this amount will make earning these heroes an achievement, but one that will be accessible for all players. So that's the third paragraph of that particular post uh, in their news. Um, so that whole thing was interesting to me because it's like um, if you complain and you amplify a message, um, you know, wide enough, wide and deep, depending on how you want to look at that. Um, Companies are making changes because they know that that's going to affect their dollars so quickly because of how the message is amplified. And I think that um, this uh, this this thing of entitlement when it comes to these games that we have to uh, that the games that we enjoy and we love playing, right? We we enjoy playing them, but the entitlement for how the game is shaped is an ever evolving thing now, right? Because anything that's on social media that's amplified can change the course of the company's original vision. And that is interesting to me because as it changes the company's original vision, then what is the actual game that we're getting? Are we getting that the game that we want or the game that you envision? And I think that's a constant um, thing that we're, we're seeing happen with a lot of these games and, and their direction, right? Like if you look at Cuphead, exactly... Uh, the way the company wanted that game to be, whether you believe it was the most difficult game ever, that was their vision and the way they drew the game. Uh, that was the vision for their diff difficulty uh, difficulty of the game, right? And all those things that um, lined up with that whole context of Cuphead, right? Then you look at a game like 
Star Wars Battlefront 2 and everything that's happening with it. Uh, to me, it's it's um it's a bigger issue of uh, amplified messaging uh, with social media as well as um, entitlement. Can you imagine if we had social media for games like E.T. on Atari or Shaq Fu? No, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine stop it. what social media would be like? That's a bigger message, man. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> These people, you know, stop complaining. Fam, it's not that big of a deal. You chill, man. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Enjoy the game. But but that's really what's happening. It's like we're we're getting these games that um we're we're highly anticipating what they're going to be like. Even the next uh Last of Us uh two, right? Mm -hmm. That's the upcoming one. What is that going to be like? Are we is social media gonna affect how that's going to play out? I I don't know. Because um even when you think of Naughty Dog uh, I, I could be completely wrong on this, but I'm just, I don't know where all this information is coming from, but, you know, whatever. Thank God for it. Um, uh, Lost Legacy was originally supposed to be a DLC, right? Yeah. It felt like it was announced as a DLC, and then it became a standalone game. Who influenced that, right? Even though the 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 the, the multiplayer uh, portion of that um, was still the Uncharted 4, like, if you want to say bridged, right? into that that whole um package if you want to say that but uh, who's influencing these conversations obviously if it's going to affect the money we have to take into account some of the thoughts that we're hearing on social media that we can easily implement into uh the the stuff battle royale right warface is getting that you know PUBG had it then you have uh, fortnite got it what's the next game that's going to have it because that's popular and that's rising the game's uh, rating, uh, whether that's a Steam, you know, top 10 or top 20 or whatever, that's that's rising that game. And if that game has microtransactions, you're going to spend the time in that game. They're going to make additional money than they did before if they didn't have that mode in there. So we're to some degree pushing, uh, not necessarily culture, but um, we're pushing um, how the companies are making their adjustments for them to stay relevant. But relevancy uh, at the relevancy at the um what do you what are you losing in the process because relevancy is just for the now right mm -hmm. so what depth are you adding for that right if it's just going to be for now and that's it is what it is man whatever whatever dude <laughs> i think it's a very good time to be a gamer because you can't you, you do have that option to to say what we like and what we don't like. Maybe a little bit too much power to say what we don't and don't like. But it helps, I feel, in in the gaming world that they can create games to fill gaps of what, you know, some people feel that they're missing. And whether it be some kind of adventure or really great story writing, they, you know, developers and studios have that option to be able to fill that gap because they, they can see people talking about it and wanting something. And I think that's awesome. I mean, way back then, like thinking of like Shaq Fu, if the community and the gaming community could have just simply said that is a terrible idea, we don't need we don't need a Shaq Fu. <laughs> it would have never <laughs> happened. Or, you know you liked it. I did. You know like it everybody either. liked Shaq Fu. Come on now. Oh whatever. That was no. Amazing. Uh uh. <laughs> that was that was I don't I don't know what what company meeting or whatever whoever decided that would be like yeah that's great let's do this nah. <laughs> nah, nah but i mean like when it comes to et how many games out there can say it's like we might have been bad but we've not been bad enough that we got buried in some dump to be forgotten <laughs> right um you know and i think it's if, if we use that like the community uses their voice in in, in a positive way light i mean we can we can possibly bring about a lot of a lot of genres that are going to be new to us that you know we want that experience so just depends Absolutely. on if we if we can say hey this is you know this is the kind of game that we want that we're looking for you know there's going to be a studio there's going to be an indie developer maybe that comes out like hey you know what i think i can make that game Okay, so so you have that, 
you have that whole thing. And then you also have uh, key terminology that was used when promoting certain games that other games started using, like verticality. Remember that that season of verticality, that that keyword movement. No, just for that? make up words here. Then it became, then it became um, the current one that we're using now, uh, to some degree, to promote certain games. Like boots on the ground is the main one now. That's the that's the that's the key term for now. Um, and who knows what the next one was. So, so um, good news, Call of Duty World War II was influenced by all, all of the things that we've seen in the past. And look how that game turned out. Amazing. So there is good news. There is hope for, for those things. But Daniel, I got something to tell you. What's up? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. What are you thankful for as we wrap up? You. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. Like, uh, you you've offered me to be a co-host here, and we're on eight months now, I believe, eight months and Crazy. forty-seven episodes for me, and it has been so much fun. It is so incredibly humbling, and you you've opened up my my world, my eyes, my heart to so many different people that I don't personally feel I would have ha had like the opportunity to meet and 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 those people have opened up my worlds to other people and you know it, it's definitely been amazing and it's incredibly humbling and that I'm I'm thankful for um, you know everyone who who's able to stop by and watch our show live or or download us like you know even after having Andrew had me on you still want to listen like that's amazing thank you <laughs> like that's it's just it's it's an incredible feeling to know that you know my voice can it has some sort of power or some kind of say to bring positivity and it wouldn't have been um possible if it wasn't for you Andrew so yeah I'm, I'm incredibly thankful for you and I'm grateful I'm grateful too I'm grateful too because um Definitely, you've allowed me the opportunity to think about things differently. Um, and it's a scary feeling because. Um, give me one second. I have to think this thing out. I, uh, I'm trying my best to make sure that um, anything that I can share with you, I don't hold that back. Um, I've I've always feel feel like um, there's always something that I need to make sure that um, whether I email it to you or or say it to you on the show or whatever I need that information to be out there. Um, I'm always concerned um, not to do the wrong thing, right? By way of, of navigating, if you want to call it the ship, you know, I, I, as I'm navigating uh, to some degree, um, I still want. To make sure that even if I fall asleep, that you can navigate the ship if I'm not awake. Um, and um, and I think that um, for the first time in a long time, you know, I feel very comfortable with um, having a team member where I can fully trust. I, I don't think that um, that's been a thing for me at all. So you you've really changed um, everything um, in regards to how I. Um, navigate uh, the things that that deal with the show so um, I'm definitely grateful uh, for you um, and um, not just your contribution but um, your friendship um, your trust and I think that um, it makes me it makes me nervous um, because this is new ground for me um, so yeah so it's been an interesting uh, couple of months, um, and I think that uh, you've been more of a blessing than you know. Oh, I thought you were going to say, that. like, more of a blessing than a curse. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've been more of a blessing than, than you know. It's, it's reframed my entire um, outlook of on, on a lot of things. Uh, you've made me happier about the industry. Um, I guess I'll share that uh, because at one point I was very, very, um, um, what's the word? Um, I, I'm not going to say tainted, but um, I've looked at the, the industry in, in a negative light and 
um, because of my past experiences to some degree. And I've always vowed that if I'm ever in a position where I can share information with somebody, I hope that they never go through anything that I've gone through. Um, and like you said, like you've said before in, in past episode, I can't fully protect and make sure those things do not happen, but I can sure do a good job to make sure that I can navigate that, that ship from rocks and icebergs and stuff like that. Not when um, you're so, sleeping. Um, not when I'm <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> but when I'm sleeping, you're awake. <laughs> so so it should be good. So so it's, it's definitely been an interesting thing for me. And, and I talk about you all the time uh, to uh, individuals who are, you know, potential listening to the show or already listening to the show. And I always ask them about what do you think of Daniela? Because um, I love hearing their feedback of, of what they're saying about you and it's always all positive like well i could do without you but daniela you can keep <laughs> you know that kind of thing <laughs> so you know i have such great friends uh, but uh but yeah um yeah it's it's been dope it's it's been really dope and and i believe that's going to continue to be dope um because um one of the things that i'm i'm really glad about is that we share the same core values and i don't have to think about um, the decision, the decision that you're making, um, because I know to some degree how you're going to, um, move in those ways. So, um, it's safe, safe ground for me. Good. So, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't ever want you to feel like you're, there's, there's something questionable. It's safe ground. So that's what I was saying before, like the Texas, you know, sentiment all the time. Um, the questions, you know, keep them coming. Um, challenging uh, challenges to my thought process. I love those because it allows me to really think about things differently uh, because I don't have all the right answers. So please feel free to continue uh, sending those. Um, and I think we're, we're in a good place. Mm -hmm. I have to agree. I do. But I think I, I think I can both safely talk for the both of us that you know, the things to be grateful for is definitely for the people who definitely tune in, definitely download us because Absolutely. I mean there, there there's a lot of you and if it wasn't if it wasn't for you guys I mean I mean we could still do this show I mean we can but having you know the feedback yeah hearing back from what people's thoughts and 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 what they think about our show that's a good feeling it's amazing and it makes us want to you know do more contribute more and you know improve and and kind of like what what sly said it's just to to never settle to you know put out the best content that we can be the best people that we can and you know we do it for ourselves but we also do it for you know everyone else because we have a voice and we use it and we want to project that positivity word i'm also thankful for that my dad that you do <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest thing that's funny yeah but um yeah so happy thanksgiving to all of you uh listening and watching uh it's always a pleasure uh, it's an honor and we really really do appreciate it daniela closes out Thank you, thank you, thank you, you guys for tuning in and watching us. I'm very much appreciative to Sly, um, Sam, for coming on and letting us pick your brain. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. And and you know what? Thank you guys for downloading us. Obviously, you know, you can download us later on on your favorite podcatchers. You can check us out and subscribe at theshowradio.info forward slash listen. Um, and yeah, happy Thanksgiving and... Uh, definitely check out our, our Patreon page and our website. You can find all the information on the show radio dot info. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Peace. I, I'm sorry. I don't know why I do the little dance. I just, I'm just happy. So, so happy. Yeah, me too.